We've got a, another Hoshizaki ice machine, but before we get to the good stuff, it's not making ice, but they call, because uh, it's not making ice, but look, the pipe is gone from the drain. So as it drains, it uh, just drops onto the floor. But it's throwing some sort of an error and stopping making ice. They have two, so it hasn't been a crisis, but it's escalating as summer's arriving, and they're going to need this one running. So uh, I turned it on, It's which is it funny. It started to drain. It ran through a drain cycle quick. Then with us in ice mode, yep, it ought to engage gear motor next. Fill the water valve and then fire up the condenser fan. And if we take a look at this, I'm guessing we're going off on high temperatures. Well, that sounds aggressive, first of all. Yeah, aggressively. Filling the water reservoir. <laughs> I said it in my master built video earlier today, right? Really, there's no way to troubleshoot a unit unless you understand its, its series, its sequence of operations. Because if you don't know what it's supposed to be doing, it's really hard to tell uh, where you're going awry. So what should be happening is this should fill up, and then there's a float in there. And once both of those floats move up, the valve should shut down. Yeah, look at how little water is in there. See how loud it is. We definitely have a water flow issue. But, I think that just may be the, uh, the filter and the water in it. Look at how splashy it is. It's not normally like that. So then the uh, floats will rise. When the floats rise, it should engage the gear motor, should start turning. And then it starts to delay the float, which will, and there's a beat, how about it? Hmm. Are we going to overflow? We are. She just shut down. Okay, so now that we've made that safety, water's fill, filled, it knows that. Now it should engage the gear motor. Okay, yep. So now we've engaged the gear motor and the fan. And the compressor is on what feels like an eternal compressor delay. I think it's a literal four or five minutes. So let's wait for the compressor to fire up. And then we'll wait for what error we get. I'm gonna leave all the, all the panels off of it and see if it makes ice just fine. Then I'm going to put the panels on it because again, you saw what I saw. Those coils really need to be cleaned up. I just wanted to step back for a minute so it's not so loud. But yeah, I mean, it still hasn't started the compressor yet. And it always gets to be about the concerning amount of time where you're like, okay, something's wrong. And then it kicks in. Just be patient. These, uh, these flakers, that's how they are. That's how they are. Also, I talked about this, so let me show you. There are a couple of dip switches on this control board. This is a mechanical proximity switch. So, this is your infrared looking into the cabinet. And one of these units, I don't remember which one, years ago, that died. And these are very expensive. And so I called tech support. And they were like, well, yeah, just flip the bin switches and that'll tell it to use the mechanical instead. So that works by there's a flapper in there. And so when the ice pushes out, it pushes the flapper to the back, but then the ice falls. And once its bin is full and it backs up the tube, then it doesn't fall. It holds the flapper back unless the flapper's back for like 12 seconds or something like that. Um, and it rolls. And kills the unit. So, again, it's like even I'm starting to go, man, this thing should have started by now. Yeah, we'll see.
There it goes. I told you, man, it's a long time. Alright, these things are boss, man. So, literally, we're gonna have ice in two minutes. If we're gonna have ice. It's been one minute. Now, this isn't good ice. Service that I just 
just ever so slightly sprayed on the coil and I packed rags down at the bottom just to make a damp rag rinsing off of this stuff. So if that don't get it, we're gonna have to get it tense. Alright, I got side panel back on, top panel back on. She's up and running, compressor kicked in. It didn't take about five or ten minutes to trip out last time, so we'll see how she does. Uh, what we may have to do is schedule a time to come and disconnect this and pull the head off. Up and running, baby. Yeah, I'm not going to put gauges on this thing unless it throws again. If it throws again, then I'll probably put a gauge on it just so I can see what it's actually tripping at. Check it out. High temp. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my gauges. I'm gonna gauge up to this. I'm feeling the discharge line. The discharge line is not that hot. So I'm wondering if we just have a bad high temp probe. In which case, there's a port I can put on a new one. 404, right? I mean, you know, heck, I could just do what uh, the other guys did and just bypass it. But I just assume not to blow the store up. Okay, so before I wire it in, we put, these both have straighters in them on purpose so I can change this in the future if I have to with it charged. Uh, and then you have to watch that the T's that you have have a Schrader compressor. So this one does. So we've got pressure. The compressor's not running yet, but I'm ready to wire this in. But I want to see it cut out. I want to see where it cuts out. If it's legitimately cutting out, you know, above 300, 350, or if the pressure switch is just shot. Which, in my opinion, the more you use a pressure switch, the faster it's going to fail. I think it has a finite number of ons and offs. And these aren't, you know, I know some people use them as basically a low pressure controls. I don't like that. I don't feel like they're made to do that. So it may have just spent its useful clicks. And when the compressor comes on, we'll watch it run. And then I'm imagining we're going to power off, cut these, wire it in here. Bada bing. Alright, compressor just fired up. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna close the sidewall because that's all things being fair. I think it's safe to say we are not going off on legitimate high pressure. Let's wait and see. Alright, so I realized we haven't actually changed anything. actually did not start tripping on high pressure so I wired it in this way anyway because I know it was so we're going to put the cover on it they have my number we're going to run around do what we need to do the rest of the day if she chirps they're going to let me know but she ain't going to chirp she's done Ooh. and to those of you that are screaming at me now like what about the water pipes on the back what about the water pipes on the back um, they're in-house guys gonna come do that. 